Onto the case of a school principal wanted in Australia for more than 70 counts of sexual offences. A panel of psychiatrists in Jerusalem has ruled that Malka Leifer has been pretending she is mentally ill so she doesn't have to stand trial. They say she is fit to face her accusers, paving the way for possible extradition after years of delays. Her lawyers are confident the Jerusalem District Court will reject this finding, insisting she isn't mentally well. She fled from Melbourne to Israel in 2008 after the sexual abuse allegations first surfaced. Well, for the latest reaction to the story, we're joined in studio by Manny Wax, activist and chief executive officer of the group Call for Oz, an organization preventing child sexual abuse in the global Jewish community. Manny, thank you so much for your time. The psychiatric panel saying that Michael Leifer is fit to stand trial, to go back to Melbourne and face her accusers. Your reaction? Well, it's a monumental day today for justice in the Malkalaifa case. This has been going on since around 2008 when uh, we need to remember that the Adas Israel School in Melbourne, Australia, uh, became aware of some of the allegations at least, and their response was to pay for her flights to Israel to evade justice. And here we are over 10 years later, 12 years later now, uh, still trying to pursue justice. But today is an incredibly important day, uh, mostly, of course, for her three courageous alleged victims, the sisters uh, Nicole, Dussie and Ellie, and um, they, are, they are certainly smiling today. Describe for us how your organisation has been involved in this case and when you mention the three alleged victims, as you put it, how they have been impacted by these delays, years and years of delays. So in 2008, Michael Leifer was sent to uh, Israel to evade justice. In 2011, uh, the three sisters went to the police to provide statements. Uh, soon after that, Victoria Police in Australia requested extradition from Israeli authorities. Uh, ultimately, she was arrested in 2014. And then uh, there were a number of assessments. She was released to house arrest. And in 2016, ultimately, she was found unfit to stand trial uh, and released to... Um, freedom, essentially, with very uh, limited um, responsibilities, such as going to regular checkups and the like. 2018, she was re-arrested, imprisoned, and um, alleged by uh, faking her illness. And as we found out today, uh, that this has been corroborated and supported by a panel of psychiatrists. Um, and it's important to note that on this occasion, the Deputy, the uh, deputy defend, uh, sorry, the deputy minister of health, um, who's now become the health minister, mm -hmm. Rabbi Yaakov Litzman, um, he is alleged to have been involved in this case in trying to put pressure on the psychiatrist to change their opinion to make sure that she's unfit. Thankfully, those psychiatrists were not involved in this assessment. There were people completely not involved in this case, yet to the dismay of Australia and to the Australian com Jewish community in particular. Bibi Netanyahu, Prime Minister Netanyahu, only a few days ago decided to appoint Litzman to the health minister position. That is a massive slap in the face to the Australian Jewish community and that is precisely how it is being seen. And how has the Australian community reacted to the latest developments? Of course, there's been a lot of delight today with this decision, but there is still uncertainty mm -hmm. because from here, it does not mean we are going to go and see Malka Leifer being put on a plane back to Australia. Mm -hmm. There is a court hearing next week, mm -hmm. court hearing number 63 in this case, and uh, we will essentially be uh, hearing the formal decision by the panel of psychiatrists. Then there will be cross-examinations. The judge will ultimately have to decide whether or not she accepts the recommendation. And if she does, Judge Lump, ultimately that will have, the defence will have the opportunity to appeal. And then once the final decision has been made, hopefully she will be fit and she will face the extradition hearing. And from our perspective, with 74 charges of rape and sexual assault against multiple victims, we expect that to be a formality and hopefully within the next few months we will see Malka Leifer on a plane back in Australia facing 
justice there. Manny, given the work that you're doing, are you surprised at the way the Jewish community helped to protect her here in Israel? As you mentioned, certain politicians as well have been accused of doing the same. But the way she was protected to not rather go back to court, face the music and get your day in court and say, look, I've been proven innocent. Nothing surprises me anymore in this uh, field uh, of child sexual abuse, unfortunately. Cover-ups, um, uh, intimidation of, of victims and their supporters aren't just unique to the Jewish community or to the ultra-Orthodox community. We've seen it in the Catholic Church. We've seen um, similar allegations in non-religious communities, in sporting clubs. So it's nothing unique here. What is unique is that we have groups, segments of our community who claim to be a light unto the nations and, and, and want to be seen as doing the right thing. Yet, when this issue arose, they have been standing firmly behind Michael Eifer, trying to, um, to do whatever they can to ensure she she evades justice and some of it are understandable reasons because ultimately they do want to protect their reputation and the like but it's unacceptable because she does pose a risk to children and there have been allegations that Michael Eifer abused girls both before she went to Australia in 2000 to be take on that role and then subsequently after 2008 when she came back here allegations that she abused in Israel as well including in Emmanuel where she lived so it's a danger to children. There is um, also the element of justice or an injustice, as it were, in this case, to her um, alleged victims. And therefore, the communities, especially the rabbis and the leaders of that community, need to do whatever they can to not just call on this mantra of tzedek, tzedek, tirdof, justice you shall pursue, but actually turn it into action and do that. Thank you so much, Manny Wax. We appreciate your insight. That's activist Manny Wax, Chief Executive Officer of the group Call for Oars, an organization preventing child sexual abuse in the global Jewish community. We appreciate your insight. Thank you.